Welcome back everyone, it's your boy Cool Kid Croc with some more Kenshi Gangsters. In the last video, we settled down at our temporary criminal headquarters instead of the United City of Heft. We currently have four gangsters, two workers, and a robot dog, which isn't exactly enough manpower we'll need to run a super illegal operation. We've already been to a couple of neighboring cities, but today we'll need to explore more to the south in search of strong warriors. When leaving Heft, the gangsters passed by a group of manhunters who 100% would have tried to beat us up and enslave us had there not been a second group nearby. I was kind of hoping we could get into some fights though. Even though the rebel farmers don't really have a lot of value in loot, they make up for it in being great XP sponges for the early game. There are also a lot of skimmers of the same direction of the desert that the gangsters were heading in, so this would be the main cause for big injuries. Followed by a different group of slavers who would try to attack us since there weren't any witnesses around. Unfortunately for the slavers, B01 was starting to become quite the strong unit, as well as Chompy being an absolute nightmare to fight against. The witnesses would walk by after we had completed the battle and all the slavers were either knocked out or dying. So the gangsters would go body to body picking up any weapons or valuable loot that the slavers had on them before healing and continuing on their journey. There was a pretty big group of skimmers to slow the group down but thanks to Chompy they survived and were able to loot some teeth for profit. It took a few more hours of wobbling but the gangsters finally arrived at the city of Stote, a small united city to the west of Heft. This city has a few less stores and only one bar so we didn't really find a a whole lot of people here. I even stopped by the slaver shop who did have a Shek slave for sale but his melee attack and defense started at like negative 8 which I, I don't think it can get any worse than that. I didn't want to waste the entire trip though so I decided to hire a hive soldier. I made him extra short and then checked the comments to which the very first comment on the first video was by Null Tanya and they said first. Ah damn it, I don't know how I let this opportunity slip through my hands to be the first comment on my own video. I could have totally done it too because I edit the videos, I watch them, and I upload them. I can comment on them before they're uploaded. Whatever, you win this time, Null Tanya. So I decided to name the Hiver to Null. The next mission would be to get the gangsters to Henge, which was the other closest city to us. All we needed to do was pass through a big empty desert to get there. But on this day, of course, the desert would be far from empty. First, the gangsters passed by another group of manhunters who decided to be a good idea to try and enslave the gangsters. This fight didn't last too long because Chompy was a part of it. Slavers limbs start flying everywhere. One by one the slavers were dropping like flies. And once the battle was over, Noel was knocked out as he had no armor and a crappy stick for a weapon. But everyone else was still conscious, able to loot whatever valuables the slavers had. The party then healed up and would continue on their way over to Henge. Now the skimmer population between Stout and Henge was pretty high with them hitting our gangsters quite often for 30 to 50 damage. This did slow us down quite a bit but by nighttime the top G's would finally arrive at Henge. Since most of our group was injured, the first goal would be to hop in beds and to heal up. While I waited for everyone to rest and heal up, I had human go inside of the bars to scout for any potential recruits. That's when we ended up finding another hazmat suit skeleton just like human, but this guy's name was Panar Tan. It's a pretty fucking awful name, but you know what, that's fine. He can be like a uh, apprentice to human, you know? Like, everybody needs an understudy. But other than Panur, <laughs> there weren't many uh, interesting possible recruits that I could find, so we went on to selling the loot the gang obtained from traveling to the city, bringing us to around 25k cats. And since our new recruits joined the gang without any weapons, stats, or armor, I wanted to at least equip them with some stuff, so I bought Panur some bare knuckles so he could learn martial arts. And then I bought Null a gnarly looking giant hammer. We then went over to the armor store and invested the rest of the money we had into some armor for both units and now we were ready to head back to Heft. The only downside was we'd be traveling much slower now since Nell was encumbered and needed quite a few strength levels until we'd be able to use the weapon properly. This was proven when our first fight was with a group of rebel farmers who ended up getting ambushed by some Garus as well. I could watch as Nell would swing his hammer at such a slow speed, he'd just never make contact with anything. The gangsters continued to heal and then they'd loot the bodies of all the farmers before moving on to the next group, this being a pack of slavers. The slavers are more near the gangsters skill level when it comes to fighting, making this battle much more severe. Chompy did a great job of taking out a good handful of the slavers before the group would be able to loot them and then heal up. By the end of this, we had barely even left Henge, but with the amount of injuries the gang endured, I decided to send them back into Henge so they could rest up for a night and heal back up. The gang made a total of around 10,000 cats from their battles just outside the city, and then in the morning by 7am it was time to continue to go back home to Heft. 
It would be a few hours later when the gangsters encountered a group of rebel farmers. And at this point, a majority of the gangsters were doing fine in combat, with only Nell and Panera being the weak link since they just joined. We did have a skimmer ambush happen right near the end of the battle, so this brought on even more injuries for us to heal, and we also had a ton of bodies to loot again. At this point, I was tired of slavers trying to always enslave us. I mean, these rebel farmers are kind of deadbeats. I've never seen any of them work on a farm before. None of them contribute to society. That's what I'm saying, so we won't be missed. So I picked out six rebel farmers to give first aid to so then we could kidnap them and sell them into slavery. Like some evil motherfuckers and shit. I also have a mod which impacts faction relations when you end up healing other characters. So the farmers were like, oh, thank you for healing us. We got one reputation for healing each farmer. They had no fucking idea of a gangster's true intentions with them. Bringing all the rebels back to Henge to sell, this was also a good way to help Null get some strength training. As he needed quite a few more strength levels before he can even begin to start to walk around properly. Never mind, use the giant hammer. The gangsters got back to Henge on day 21 and went into the slave shop to sell our enemies. For each person we sold, we earned 400 cats, which is insanely low. Like, you can't buy anything for 400 cats. A food cube is like 1k cats. A fucking hand job's like 1.5k. That's way too much work just to get the bare essentials for one day. You'd have to, like, sell, like, 50 slaves to, uh, feed and fuck a family of, like, six. <laughs> I then had everyone heal once again before making the final true journey back to Heft. Third time's a charm, you know what they say. The gangsters were first to spot a group of rebels lacking, so we engaged the battle and used Chompy to run around their lines and take out their crossbowmen. Meanwhile, the rest of the gangsters could practice their melee skills against the rebels. After the battle, the gangsters continued attempting to reach Heft, with the first battle only leaving minor injuries, but ate up all of our first aid kits and repair kits. At this point, we now had to get to Heft ASAP, because Noel's leg was getting worse and worse by the minute, slowing the group down even more. After a quick skimmer attack, the group was even more injured, but luckily a group of passing traders walked by our heroes, letting us buy at least one first aid kit to heal Null and all of our non-robotic gangsters. After that, it would only take a few in-game hours, but the group finally made it back to Heft. While injured, they were all a bit stronger since they had left Heft at the start of the video. We also got back up to like 25k cats since our workers were doing the copper mining operation, so everything was was looking pretty good. The gangsters all went into beds to try to rest up for the night. Meanwhile, a goblin cultist attempted to jump by Zumi. It's a good thing I had her at least train a little bit on the training dummies and the dexterity pull because she managed to take down the cultist. Then I would have the top G's ambush the other goblins, and after the battles, the gangsters had a lot of loot since the goblins have pretty good loot on them. On top of that, I would pick up the ones that were still alive, heal them up, and then try to sell them into slavery. And now that we were near our home again, I decided to have no Null and Panera train their fighting skills while we're near here. Meanwhile, B01 decided to go into the United City's Emperor building. This is where Emperor Tengu was seated. B01 wanted to talk to him about the future since B01's gang is getting pretty big. You know, it's going to be official soon. This is when Tengu started going on about a quest. Going to find a wizard that lives in a tower to the south. He would give us some kind of potion that would allow us to fight a grave reef to save the empire. B01, pretty confused, accepted this quest, to which every guard of Empire came up to B01, showering him in praises. This was obviously just some type of cruel joke. There is no tower, there is no grieve wraiths, except there are since I have a mod that adds them. This was just a direct spit in the face from the so-called noble Tengu. So B01 would make note of it for future reference, as right now, Tengu is probably pretty hard to kidnap or kill, but possibly in the future, once we get stronger, we might be able to. Our heroes spent the rest of the day in heft when all of a sudden a group of manhunters began fighting them in the middle of the streets. At this point in the game, the gangsters are now enemies with the manhunters, so the manhunters are going to attack them on sight, and guards will just look at it as a civil dispute. There's also a decent amount of them, and with the whole group split up, it was pretty rough for the start of a battle. The group was still able to overcome the manhunters and knock them all out, but this was a clear sign that even if the city gates, our heroes aren't exactly safe. The gangsters would then have to heal, which went into the nighttime, until a group of rebel farmers ambushed our copper miner, Brittany Ears. The group was of course split up, with the first half going down right away. Now, Null holding Chompy for strength XP, he had to put Chompy down to quote unquote let the dog out, and Chompy ran in just in time as B01 was knocked down. Chompy and the others would fight the remaining rebels until victory was achieved, and after this battle, we had yet again a lot of healing to do. It was looking like the next 24 hours 
hours are going to be spent mainly sleeping at the bar. In the evening, everybody was healed up, so we went back out into the desert to find a group of manhunters to fight. Now, this battle was pretty intense. I mean, limbs were flying and grown men were crying. The gangsters knocked out all the slavers pretty easily, even killing a few. So after healing and looting, B-01 had a pretty good idea. Fuck it. How about we enslave the slavers and sell the slavers to the slave store? The group loved the idea, so they picked out six slavers to heal up and pick up. And then the gangsters began to walk back to Heth. Slavers in their hands, ready to sell. The irony of the situation was actually really funny. I mean, just think about it. Sally sold seashells near the seashore, and now Croc will sell slavers to the slave store. Unfortunately though, when we were like right near the gate, maybe a minute away, another group of slavers spotted us and began combat. This would knock down some of the gangsters who were holding healed up fucking slavers. So every time we ended up getting knocked out, a slaver would be set free, making it some kind of like reinforcement bullshit. The whole plan was just step by step backfiring on me. On top of that, we were as slow as maple syrup when it came to moving, so skimmers walked right into the group making the situation much worse. And to put the cherry on top, once we arrived at the slave store, there wasn't even the normal option to sell who we're carrying, but just members of our party. Like, I'm not selling choppy for like 2.5k, what am I, a fucking meth addict? The only workaround that I could think of was researching imprisonment and then building some prisoner cages, that way we could attempt to recruit the slavers and sell them directly that way. But right before I was able to grab some books, I didn't notice Ank was still knocked out near all the slavers. So once a slaver woke up, he went over, healed Ank and fucking enslaved him. We were lucky enough to slave Ank, but the slave status does still take some time to wear off, which is a huge fucking annoyance. While Ank was hiding inside, we then bought some books, researched imprisonment, and then built a couple cages inside of our heft house. Once I did this though, I realized the slavers would want an upfront fee of 20,000 cats to join our group. Seeing as we're going to be selling them for about 2k cats, that makes us a negative 18k profit. That's not going to fucking work. So we're going to have to come up with a new plan, and that plan is going to be to starve them to near death until that 20k goes down to maybe a piece of dried meat. And that's where I'm going to end off this video if you enjoyed it remember to subscribe if you haven't already leave a like and comment as it helps the channel and videos grow and thank you to everybody for all the support so far on the series it is greatly appreciated hope you all enjoyed the video though and i'll see you in the next one peace